All right, this will be our first lesson of uh, Foundations and Pre-Calculus Math 10. Uh, this unit on measurement is going to focus is on uh, two different parts. The first part is going to revolve around uh, changing from one unit to another, so basically changing from SI or metric to the Imperial uh, US system that you're used to seeing um, down there. Uh, in addition, the second part is going to deal with uh, volume and surface area. And I know, um, actually some of you have probably taught in grade 8, and uh, this is a part of that curriculum, and then I think you did a little bit in grade 9 as well. So, in any event, um, we'll get started here in a second. Um, what I'm also going to be doing is giving you guys some tips as we're going to be watching this video in class. Um, it's going to be a little bit slower than most of the videos. Uh, I'll show you places where you should be pausing and trying questions on your own, that type of thing. All right. So, Lesson 1.1, Imperial Measures of Length. In 1976, Canada adopted SI units. All right. Um, to measure length. SI units, for those of you who want to know, it stands for um, System International. It's actually kind of a French thing. Um, it's commonly referred to if you want to write on the side here as metric. All right, so when you see SI, we're really thinking metric or what we normally use here in Canada, centimeters, um, meters, kilometers, so on. However, uh, construction and manufacturing industries continue to use imperial units. So for instance, uh, you go to a construction site and you start talking centimeters and meters, people are going to look at you pretty funny. So that's uh, one example where uh, there really hasn't been any change. In Canada we often use imperial. Units to measure height and weight. So for instance, I don't know, uh, you guys are probably a little young to be in your driver's license, but in Canada they actually put your height and weight in metric and I, I know when I saw whatever it was, one point some odd meters and how many kilograms, it didn't really mean much to me because we're so used to seeing our height in um, a certain amount of feet and inches and weight and a certain amount of pounds. All right. So what we're going to be doing is trying to give you guys an idea of how to go back and forth. Um, it actually is a really useful skill because you're going to see times when uh, whether you're building something at home or what have you where uh, you'll be needing to, uh, to do this. All right. So. Uh, this first table is going to be a table that you guys are going to have on your formula sheet and uh, I just want to work with you to fill it out. So what I have here is I have the imperial units on the left hand side, inch, foot, yard, mile, the abbreviation, and the next thing we have is a referent. What a referent is, is a referent is um, something that's used to basically estimate. So if you want to write maybe estimate underneath that's uh, her estimation. That's kind of what we're doing right here. So for instance, if we wanted to estimate an inch, well, what could we use? So I try to look for things that are easily available. All right. So the one that I'm going to get you guys to use for an inch is your thumb length. So, of course, not all our thumbs are one inch long, um, but that's just a good ballpark figure. All right. Uh, the relationship between the units, we don't have one because the inch is kind of as small as we're going to go. Um, as far as imperial goes. Next one we have a foot. You can probably imagine where this one's going to head as far as reference go. A foot. But we're going to use a foot length. And again, not all our feet are 12 inches, but we'll, uh, we'll use that as a, uh, a reference. Um, and the relationship that I have here is, of course, that one foot is equal to 12 inches. Most people know that one, um, but in the ones to come, that's where it gets a little bit vague. Don't need to be memorizing this. This is all going to be kind of all this stuff is going to be on your formula sheet your formula sheet you're going to be able to have for each test or quiz. Um, a yard. All right? So a yard is kind of uh, compared towards a meter, so that just so you have an idea of what you probably see a yard stick before or a meter stick. Um, they're not exactly the same, but they're close. And what we're going to use is approximately someone's arm span. Now, obviously Mr. Johnson's arm span and Mr. Franzen's arm span are quite different. But like I said, that's just a reference. All right. So one yard is equal to three feet, or therefore, if a foot's equal to 12 inches, one yard is equal to 36 inches. And the last one, a mile. This one is actually really kind of tough, and I don't really know if I like this reference. But it was one that they used in the book, and so I just have to go with that. Um, the reference says for one mile, it's the distance walked in 20 minutes.
Obviously, that's, um, I mean, kind of vague, 20 minutes for me, you, I, I don't know, um, but that just gives you an idea of how to estimate it. And the conversion that I've given here is 1 mile is equal to 1,760 yards or 5,280 feet. Okay. So let's work with playing around with these units. I don't think you'll find it uh, too difficult. Um, when we get into the example phase right here, uh, I wouldn't mind if you guys maybe watching one example and then trying the uh, remainder on your own. Um, whatever you want, all right? So these examples are going to be examples of proportional reasoning. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways that we can convert. Um, this one isn't my favorite. I'll show you, uh, I guess, my favorite on the other side. All right, so example, convert five feet, or sorry, five yards to feet. So if we have five yards, then all we need to do is come up here and see, well, how many uh, feet are in a yard? We see that there's three, so we have five times three feet. Very straightforward, we get 15 feet. I know it's hard to believe that you're in math 10 with this, but that's life. Um, how about converting uh, five yards into inches? Well, you can do it two different ways. Since we've already converted it to feet, that's not too bad. We have, this is equal to 15 feet, and we know that there's 12 inches in a foot, and if we multiply 15 times 12, 15 times 10 is 150, 15 times 2 is 30, that gives you 180 inches. All right. Try one more. Um, convert 51 inches to feet and inches. Now you might say, well, what does that mean? They're changing from inches to inches. You're going to put as many feet, or basically into those 51 inches, and then the remainder is going to be in inches. All right. So what you would do here is you would go basically 51 divided by 12. And what that would end up giving you is, let's see, 12 goes into 51 uh, four times, that would be 48. So you have four, and then you have three twelfths left over. And so this would now be in feet, all right? We have four feet, and then three out of 12 feet. Well, that's the same thing, of course, as having four feet, three inches. All right, so that's what they mean by that. Next one says they want you to put into yards, feet, and inches. Well, let's take a look. What we need to do is, since we uh, are dealing with four feet, three inches right now, let's go and figure out how many yards are in that. Well, this one's actually very easy because uh, I'll get you to maybe recall that three feet is equal to one yard. And so therefore, well, what can we say? We can say that if we just subtract three feet from there, we're going to have one yard, one foot, and three inches. Notice how I'm circling my answers. I kind of encourage you guys to do that just to let me know when I'm looking at your homework um, where the final answer is. Okay? If you want to box it in, start, whatever you need to do, that's what I'm looking for, though. All right, let's turn to the next page. So a couple definitions. Uh, the first one, proportional reasoning, is the ability to understand And compare quantities that are related multiplicatively, basically related somehow through multiplication or division. All right, so that was the method that we used on the other page. Uh, unit analysis. Unit analysis is a method of converting a measure in a given unit to a measure in a different unit, running out of real estate on this one, by multiplying by the conversion factor. And this unit analysis that I'm talking about is my kind of favorite way. So you're going to see when I'm teaching, that's going to be the way that I'm going to adopt the majority of the time. Um, but of course, it's up to you. And that, of course, if we use the conversion factor in that last definition, we should probably define it. Conversion factor is a number 
used to multiply or divide a oops, <coughs> quantity to convert from one unit of measure to another. So hopefully my writing's not too messy as you get through the year. I find that my students uh, start to get a little bit used to it. All right, so hang in there. Um, all right, so I am a fan of definitions. I like people to speak mathematics rather than just saying uh, just kind of regular layman's terms. So try to get used to uh, dealing with some of that stuff. Um, let's move on to our last uh, couple of examples here. Um, here we go. So this is going to be, uh, I'll be solving this one um, using uh, an example of unit cancellation or in brackets you can write analysis. Okay. So Mr. Johnson is framing a picture of the Greek mathematician Pythagoras. Handsome guy, I found that picture uh, online, I was pretty uh, happy with it. The perimeter of the frame picture is 142 inches. What will the perimeter of the frame picture uh, be in feet and inches? Now, of course, I'm not trying to uh, make fun of your intelligence here. I know this is not too tough to do. But believe it or not, in my past um, past classes I've had in this course, they've uh, struggled with it. All right, So not necessarily these questions, but they do get a little bit more daunting. So if we start with 142 inches, the task, as you uh, heard, is just to put it into feet and inches. So what I'll do is I'll take 142 inches, and this is where I'll use that conversion factor. I know that I have um, one foot being worth 12 inches. Okay. Now you'll notice what I did there is I multiplied it by this uh, conversion factor. What I always want you to do is if we're trying to get feet by it themselves, we're trying to get our answer into feet to start with, well, I want you to always make sure that these inches or whatever you want to cancel out, those are going to be in the numerator and the denominator. That's what we're always looking to do. All right? And then the beauty is you can just multiply straight across. 142 times 1 is just 142. And then 142 divided by 12. That goes in 11 times. All right, now you'll see what I did there, is I used my calculator. Now, what you can do is you can go and just deal with the decimal representation right here. So I'm going to take the, uh, I'll just subtract 11, as you'll see, I'll just have the decimal left. Now, what that means is I have 0.83 repeating of a foot. But if I take that and I multiply it by 12, the number of inches in a foot, it tells me that I have exactly 10 inches left. So right now I have 11 and 10 twelfths of a foot, all right? which is equivalent, as you know, to 11 and 11 feet, 10 inches. Okay. So I'll show you a couple more, um, couple more examples of doing one like that on the next page. But I like that unit cancellation. always leaves you with the units that you're looking with, and then you can just deal with the remainder. All right. uh, the framing material is sold by the foot. Mr. Johnson wants nothing but the best for this frame. It's Pythagoras, after all. He's, a, he's an important guy in mathematics. So it costs uh, $3.89 a foot. Uh, what will the cost of the material be before taxes? All right, so I'll just use um, a simple let statement. We know how much we are dealing with here. Um, let's get started. So let C equal the cost since the material only comes in feet, we must round, what do you think, up or down? Well, if it only comes in feet, right, you're going to have to round up to the nearest foot. All right, so remember what the answer was above. We had 11 feet. 10 inches. Well, unfortunately, you can't walk into the store and say, I'd like, uh, you know, 11 feet and 10 inches worth of this material. So instead, instead, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get 12 feet.
All right, so um, 